You are watching Limited Resources Draft Series on MTGO Academy featuring Marshall Sutcliffe. Hey guys, Marshall here from Limited Resources, and we're doing a little draft here on MTGOAcademy.com. Let's see what we open up. Oh, I like this one. I like Golden Hind, Feast of Dreams, The Johnny's Presence, Cloak Siren. I even like Seder Grove Dancer. Okay, I love Swift Claw. Skink is fine. This is just a nice pack. I'm going to take a Hypnotic Siren out of it, though. I think it's between Hypnotic Siren and Golden Hind, and I think you can make a pretty good argument for either of them. But I'm going to go with the Siren. I just think it's more powerful. Uh, you know, it's, it's a sort of a game ender. Golden Hind does his job, and he does it well. And I wouldn't be, like, if I misclicked Golden Hind, I wouldn't be sad at all. But... This is kind of a uniquely huge effect on the game. I like I like effects like that that can just just steal the game. All right, we we ship the golden hind, and I could just take a pin of the earth, but I'm actually just going to take this golden hind too. Magma spray, pin of the earth, golden hind are kind of the three that I'm looking at here. I like cures dismissal just fine as well, but I think golden hind is enough better than pin of the earth that I I want to take it. I mean, I almost took the other one, but I'm, I, I still feel pretty comfortable with just taking the best card in the pack. I mean, yeah, the person to our left might take a Golden Hind and maybe cut us off on green a little bit, but I'm not that worried about it. That pack was pretty stacked up, and if they took a red card, you know, they're going to take a red card out of that next pack, too. If they took a white card, they might take Golden Hind. They might just stick with their guns. It, you never really quite know, so I'm fine with this. All right. Hubris, Warwing Siren, Riptide, Chimera. Chimera is interesting. Uh, Lucrakota is good too. Or as me and Zach call him, Lucy Rakata. Good old Lou. Um, I think it's between these two, and I think I'm just going to keep it simple and take the Warwing Siren here. Um, I kind of like going off with the, uh, with, the, with, the, with the Riptide Chimera, but... Mm, there are definitely decks where it suffers and where it's not that great. And uh, I'd rather just uh, I'd rather just take the good old Warwing Siren that's kind of just always playable, sometimes better than others. All right, here's some stuff. Uh, Grove Dancer, Strength from the Fallen. There's a Feast of Dreams, which is a little bit late-ish here. Not super late, but a little bit. And then some good white cards with the Johnny's Presence, Swift Claw, Cory Colossus, Nick F Nick's Fleece Ram. These are all pretty nice, kind of doing different things. This is a card I've been keeping my eye out on, though, and I'm actually going to take it here. It's not the best card in this pack, but it's the kind of card that I like to pick up and try to figure out if I can make it good. And then I'll know. Um, yeah, and then I'll, and I'll have a good idea as we go late. All right, so white continues to be quite open. Supply line cranes this late is getting a little bit silly, I'd say. Rise of Eagles is certainly something I could consider here. I can bail. I can dump these two cards and go for supply line cranes, but I still think just sticking with my guns is probably correct here. Somebody's going to get hooked up on white, and I'm a little bummed about it. But Rise of Eagles goes nicely in what we have here. We can ramp into it. It double triggers this thing. I just, I like it. Hmm. Another Cory Colossus in white. I think I'm just going to take Thassa's Devourer here. I actually like the card quite a bit. Um, it's not that good. Like, it's not that I like the card because it's awesome, but I just think it does fill a role. A 2-6 is huge, tough to block. It has sort of a win condition with Constellation if you have some combo or whatever. Usually that it doesn't come to that. The reason you play this card is because it's an enchantment creature, and if you want that type of thing going on, you know, like with this or whatever, and because it's a 2-6 on the ground and just... It's sort of like the blue Ferris Band... Uh, what's it called? It's the 3-7, the you know? So it's, it's, it's one of those type of cards. All right, good options here. Thassa's Ire, Pin to the Earth. I actually like uh, Pin to the Earth a ton here. Crystal and Nautilus, I'm not a huge fan of. Thassa's Ire is interesting, though. It's pretty good, actually. It's funny. It's, it's actually better than it looks. But it is very mana intensive. I think I'm just going to take the Pin to the Earth here. 
And I'll take a font pretty easily. That's actually just a nice pickup for us. And I like seeing that font there. If we if we get the uh, the Riptide Chimera back, it's unlikely. It's certainly possible though that that card does have a little bit of a you know kind of stay away vibe to it. I think. Wow, Resco Swiftclaw still in the pack. I'm going to take the Storm Chaser Chimera uh, because we can splash it. I mean, we can Font of Fertility for red and play it, and it's really good. Card's sweet. And it also just means if we open up a lightning strike down the line or something like that, we can keep our eye open for it. Nice. Font of Fortunes. We'll take that. I like that a lot here, too. Okay, do we want Market Festival or Lou? We want Lou. I mean, we have stuff to do with the mana, but we don't really need it. Um, sure. Sure, but probably not. All right. I kind of like the way this deck came out. Looks like the white got all snatched up. The only card that really came back that, that mattered was the Oresco's Swift Claw. And we're not super worried about that card, I don't think. Our deck's a little funky, but I kind of like where it's at. And we can pick up a few flyers. Herald of Torment. What are our other options in our colors? Um, no, no, no. Maybe, probably yes, or Herald of Torment. Yeah, this pack's a little unfortunate for us because Herald is that good. But, hmm. Probably just want this Astronomer. We're not really doing anything with it at the moment, but I feel like our green is just good enough to hold on to here. So, yeah, I'm just going to take the Astronomer just as a two drop. Oh, yes. Our green just got a lot better. We're going to take this card, definitely. Seder Wayfinder, if it comes back, I'll be happy. Noble Quarry, same thing. Snake, same thing. Retraction hits Helix. Any of the, like, the only card I really don't care about is Satessan Oath Swarm, but if we get Wayfinder, Quarry, Snake, or Retraction Helix, I'll be happy with any of those. But I'm going to take Faded Intervention. Wow. Just getting the hookup. Oh, man. Hate passing one of those, but obviously we're going to take Nessian Wilds Ravager thing is uh it's a beating there's no doubt about that um i will say though with the ravager and faded intervention as our last two picks we're a lot less likely to play storm chaser chimera we can font a fertility for the green that we need you know to get to these these big cards our mana got a little worse with this and a lot worse with this so we probably have to strip this uh storm tide chimera out we'll see for sure but it's likely all right, here's a Wayfinder, and there's a Ferris Band Tromper as well, along with the Chorus of Tides. I'd like a Chorus of Tides in this deck, too. Probably just have to take the Chorus of Tides and hope to wheel the Wayfinder. I want the Wayfinders to make Strength from the Fallen good, um, but I don't think we need to dedicate, like, super high picks to them. So, yeah, I'm just going to take Chorus of the Tides here. I'm going to hide this thing for now. Ooh, this pack got bad. Bolt of Karanos is here somehow. But we're probably just going to play Crypsis. Yuck. Not even sure if we're going to run it. I like, ooh, Stor uh, Swordwise Centaur or Sudden Storm. That's a real decision. We're going to be green enough to run Centaur, I think. And it really is a great little two drop. But Sudden Storm can help get us to this later stage. A French player. Awesome. Welcome. I'm going to take Sudden Storm here. I think that it's going to fill a role that is harder to fill. All right, now Swordwise or Chorus. I, I think I just want to be a Flyers deck. I really like Swordwise Centaur, though. No, I think we're just going to be Flyers. Here's a Wayfinder or a Tromper. I'll take the Wayfinder this time. Mortals Dissolve, I like that.
If you guys want to join the clan, it's quite easy to do as well. You can just send me a message just like Juju44 just did. All right, we got the snake and the wayfinder. We're going to take the wayfinder. Divination, easy pick there. And our deck is actually quite strong already. And we've got probably our best pack coming up. So now we've got triple wayfinder strength from the fallen. I like that. That's pretty nice. Uh, neither of these are real cards. So we'll just take a green one. Uh, did you accept it? There he is. Little symbol appears. There it is. Anyway, you can just send me a message and, and ask for an invite. The only rules, of course, you probably already know this, are that you may not be a jerk and you must love magic. Very easy. You too can be in the clan. Crypsis is probably going to get cut. Don't think we need it. Uh, cards we're going to be looking for in Theros. Well, there's a lot. Nessian Asps. We're going to be looking for Voyaging Satyrs and Nimbus Naiads. And, of course, any bombs that we might find. And, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot waiting for us there. Voyages Ends. Shipbreaker Krakens. Hello. Because we needed more top end. Yeah, we're definitely taking it, though. These cards are quite similar in this deck, I think. Yeah, I like this a lot. I want low drops. I want to be able to, to gum up the ground for sure. Um, cards like Pin to the Earth are excellent in decks like this. Basically, Strength from the Fallen is with, with the Seder Wayfinders, which will probably just run two of those, I'm thinking, are just excellent. I'm going to take Voyages End over Time Defeat. Time Defeat would be fine, but I like Voyages End a lot in a deck like this. Oh, we'll hide the foil one. That way we get to keep these ones. I think this is what our deck's going to look like with whatever else we find here. Rise of Eagles can go away if it needs to. Uh, Thassa's Devourer can go away. Remember, these are also green centaurs. Uh, enchantments, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big game. Instant speed twice? Yeah, it's a thing. Uh, I'm going to take Vaporkin. I like Coastline Chimera in, in a deck like this too, but I think Vaporkin is going to be good. I think we're going to be able to beat down okay with it. Nylea's Presence, Unicorn. Yeah, we'll take the Presence. Looks like we're getting cut a bit now, which makes sense. Uh, here's an interesting pick. A Prescient Chimera, which we would definitely run, or a Karametra's Acolyte, which we would also definitely run and helps us cast our big spells and even get to like our big monstrosity. Normally I would just take um, Prescient Chimera because it's just a better spell on its own, but Acolyte might be correct. Let's see what we have for green mana symbols, sort of one. This is one, this is one, this is one. These are temporarily one. We actually don't have that many. I mean, we don't need it to tap for much, but I'm just gonna take the Chimera here. I think it's just gonna hold its own a little better. Artisan Sorrow or Bronze Sable. I'll take the Sorrow. We don't have a way to kill anything, any enchantments yet, and we're going to need it. Hmm. I guess we're going to take a Volpine Goliath. Uh, a Null, is, after we just picked that up, is, is less good. But Volpine Goliath is not what we really need in this deck anyway. Um, I will actually take this Unicorn here. I'm not sure which one of these is better. Generally speaking, Vulpine Goliath is better. Brian and I just call it a dragon on the podcast. I mean, it's just, it's bigger than everything, and it has trample. It's just really good. You know, it's not, you don't need to high pick it or anything, but, like, when it comes to six drops, it's kind of the, the standard, I think, in, in this block is Vulpine Goliath. It's just, is it better or worse than Vulpine Goliath? It's a big question for evaluating sixes. But, yeah, like I said, our curve is already too high. We can get rid of Thassa's Devourer either... Eagles or Volpine Goliath, it kind of depends on really where we want to be. If we're really considering ourselves a flyer deck, then Eagles is better. If we just want raw power, then I think Volpine Goliath is a little bit better. Um, I don't think that we need both Fauna Fortunes and Divination, so we're probably going to be cutting one of those. I don't need Benthic Giant. We have plenty of stuff on the high end. I think I'm just going to cut this Skull Cleaver, actually. 
Geez, that probably shouldn't be there. I'm glad to get rid of it, though. It kills some of our really big stuff, and it's quite annoying. Um, no, we're not doing that. Hmm. Thassa's Bounty actually is kind of interesting in this deck. Uh, I need to make four cuts, but they shouldn't be too hard. We can definitely bring in that red card if we want. Now we have double Nylea's presence. We can absolutely, like, I think we just cut Divination. I like Divination a little bit better than Font, but Font actually has a, at least a few synergies in our deck, so we got to consider that. Uh, Ravager Intervention, probably that. Uh, like that, yeah, absolutely. Font is probably in. This font is in. This one's not. I think this is what our deck is going to look like, roughly. Siren goes over here. I like Font of Fertility in a deck like this. It helps get us up to the mana we need, and it helps fix our mana, so that's really nice. Uh, Mortal's Resolve is just okay here. It doesn't really do a ton for us. It's definitely cuttable. Um, I like Font in a deck where we're running this Font, for example. Double Nylea's Presence, probably not needed. We could probably just cut one of them. I mean, we're not really doing a ton with the fixing. We'll do a little bit, but, you know, it's it's... If you get too many of these in your hand, then you're just kind of doing nothing. But you you want one a lot of the times. A lot of the times. Strength from the Fallen with double Wayfinder. Plus, just your guys die. Like, you play a Vaporkin, they kill it. That kind of thing happens all the time. Elitus Astronomer is definitely not maximized here, but I like the 1-3 the on the ground for 2 mana with some upside. I think that's really good. Yeah, I think this deck looks good just like this. So we should be on the green side of things, so we can play Font, Golden Hind, and Seder Wayfinders early. So we're going to go with 9-8 on the green end of the spectrum. Even if, And also we need to have green for this, even if our later drops are a little bit more green. Rise of Eagles is definitely something we could consider cutting here too. That is very cuttable. Rise of Eagles, maybe for a divination. We've got plenty of top end, I feel like. And Rise of Eagles is good. Yeah, maybe we just try it out. We'll have to mulligan a little aggressively if we get like three of these big spells in our hand without much ramp, but I think it'll work. All right. Let's see what this thing can do. It's got a lot of power. 